see some speckles up against that cover there, some of that rock. Best way to figure it out is to fish it, so that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> now that's fun right there. Hey everybody, Joel Nelson here with Midwest Outdoors, and today we're fishing the river system for crappies of all things. I'm just gonna hoist this guy in. Ooh. And one thing about river crappies is they have shoulders, just beautiful fish. So, you know, everything that I know about summer crappie fishing when it comes to river systems, it's really all about fishing current breaks. And today that's what we're gonna focus on. Current breaks created by rock, created by timber, created by brush, really anything that stops the current, that's where panfish like this are gonna be. And we're gonna have a great time. So today we're fishing light plastics, really tube jigs, small twister tails, grubs, really anything that has a slow fall rate is what's in order because so often fish in these systems are looking up to feed. There's a lot of shad uh, running up and down the, the sides of the breaks right here. We've got all kinds of different baits and terrestrials and these fish are actively positioned on these current breaks looking upward. So anything with a slow fall rate is really the ticket. If it's too heavy, you're gonna have some problems catching fish. It needs to drop right in their mouths. Ooh, there we go. That feels pretty good. <laughs> boy, oh boy. River slabs, what a blast. Ooh, these fish are thick. Like I said earlier, you know, the predominant food source out here is shad. So as you can see, these fish, like, they are thick. They are big mouth. They're not afraid to take out big baits. So you don't have to worry so much about the profile or oversizing your plastic, worry about being too large. The biggest trick is really just being light enough so that it drops. And I'll show you a little bit about the technique and what I'm up to and how to get them. So really, the key part of this tactic is a little bit of patience, but a lot of feel. And so often when we're talking panfish rods, you just don't have the equipment to be able to get a bite like this done. And that's why I'm using today what I call, it's the LEP, it's the Legend Elite Panfish by St. Croix. They really spared no expense in going after the pinnacle of technology. This thing fishes more like a high-end walleye or a bass rod than most people's concept of what a panfish rod is. And again, it's super important on a bite like today when we're literally casting out just trying to keep a tight line, and I'm waiting for a slack line hit. I'm trying to keep the line tight, but the further away I get from the boat, the harder that becomes. So when you're looking for slack line hits, you literally need to feel the bite transmitted through that slack, up through the rod guides, and up to your fingertips. And that's a hard thing to do for most fishing rods because most of them just don't have the inherent sensitivity to get that done. So when you're fishing for panfish, in the summer months when it's finicky, when it's tough like this, sometimes quality isn't just something that's a, a desirable att attribute, it can literally mean everything. The, the difference between getting bit, catching a fish, and getting nothing. You know, it's a, it's a turbid water system, and especially with any rain, we've had just a little bit recently, bright colors I've always found are really the way to go. And that doesn't always have to mean neons and pinks and so on and so forth. Sometimes it can just mean a contrasting color, a white. A bright white shows up really well in this water. And it just tends to be though that chartreuse, the pinks, the whites, the, the yellows can be real winners here because it's really all about visibility. There's no rattles in a lot of these baits. There's, there's no other attracting characteristics. It's all about the color, the shape and the profile, that rate of fall. And, you nail all of those categories, you're gonna get fish. There we go. Oh, that's a nicer one. Look at that fish. Pretty, pretty. I'm gonna go back and get the net for him. I don't wanna lose this fish. Ooh. <laughs> there you have a river crappie. Look at that thing. The gullet on that fish is a lot more like a largemouth bass than a crappie. Oh, he wasn't going anywhere. He is just stuck fast. He just absolutely lunchboxed that thing. Whew. So look at that. 
That is a beautiful fish. This is a fish approaching 14 inches, which, you know, for a lot of people, they'll say they'll catch 14s. You'd be surprised what it takes for a fish to be 14 inches when we're talking crappie. So just a beautiful river pig. And I tell you what, it's really simple. You find the river breaks. The, the fish like this, especially trophy crappies like this, they don't want to be in the current. They want to be in soft bottom areas with a little bit of cover, maybe even some rock or stumps nearby, but they want to be out of that current. That's the biggest key. Stay out of the current, make a lot of casts, look for some cover, look on your side imaging, find fish like this, and just slow jig them up. Whew. More Midwest Outdoors after this.